G'day guys, how are you going? Today we're working on a Jayco Dove, which is like the Swan, but slightly smaller. The guys have put a hot water system, one of those portable ones on to have a, you know, a bit of hot water in the kitchen sink and for a hot shower, you know, when he's, when he's out and about. Uh, also, you know, bayonet for a barbecue as well, uh, bayonet for the hot water system to run that and just make things a little bit more simpler. Um, we've got a few issues with it first off, to, but I'll show you some of the regulation stuff that we need to sort out first. So you can see it's got the um, LPG bottle up, up the front here, and you can see that the, um, yeah, you need, you need tools to, to, to um, disconnect it. So we're gonna try and, you know, we wanted to replace this anyway, but if you have a look down here, this is where the gas regulator is. Now this, this gas regulator needs, the top of it needs to be about this, this high, slightly higher than it, okay? Also, if you look at the test nipple, this is where we have to test to make sure it's the right, you know, um, 2.75 kPa and everything, and also test if it's leaking. I don't know how you even get to that one, so I don't know if it's ever been tested because uh, that looks a bit sus to me. So we got to sort this location out. Put a new one in anyway. They don't they only last about five years these things, so we got to sort all all that out. Um, another thing's got a you know awesome bike rack out the front here, which is which is great. But I asked him. I said, um, do you have a second? You know, you're thinking about a second bottle. He said, oh yeah, I've got a second bottle. He just stores it in this uh, compartment up the front here. I'll see if I can open it up for you. Here we go. So he just says he stores it in here, okay? Which is um, not a great idea because you can, you imagine if that bottle ever leaks a little bit from the valve, okay? Because you can have these, you know, higher bottles, or whatever. If they leak slightly, this whole compartment here is gonna fill up with gas because LPG is heavier than air, right? So it'll sit there, it sits in buckets, sits, just sit there. And if you have a torch or something in there or a battery drill or something, and it can ignite, and there's a source of ignition, that whole thing's gonna blow. Another thing, when you've got this shut, um, there needs to be a red sticker. If, you know, if it is an LPG locker, there needs to be a red reflective sticker, and that tells the fireys if something's going down with this camper, like it's on fire or something, they can shine a torch in there and say, okay, we've got some LPG bottles in that locker. Now, normally a locker's gotta have fully partitioned off with a vent in the bottom and all this sort of stuff, but, so not a great idea. So I said to him, how about we, you know, we've got this water jerry can at the front here, okay? I said, if we just cut this out, we could put a cradle in there for the four kilogram bottle, and then I've got something really nice to mount a new regulator on with a new hose, and that'll get that LPG bottle out of there and into the front here. So uh, he said that's a great idea, which is good. He also has a, that he's bought a kick-ass hot water system, okay? And we wanna hang that on the side here, not permanently, of course, you can't hang it permanently. Put it on the side here, put a gas bayonet down under here somewhere to hook that on. Also have a water feed that um, comes from the pump from the camper and into the hot water system so it can, you know, supply hot water to the kitchen sink or even a shower or something like that. And also we've got another, he's bought the kick-ass pump as well, so we can suck it from another water source, which is, might not be portable, but fine for having a shower. So we're gonna try to do that as well. Also, he's putting a, a barbecue around the other side at the same time, it's very, yeah, it's very easy. It takes another half an hour, 45 minutes to put another barbecue bayonet in um, at the time, and that'll be on the other side. So um, anyway, I'll let you know as we go along and hopefully show you as we go through it. Okay, thanks for watching so far, guys. Appreciate it. G'day, guys. Okay, a bit rainy today, so um, I was gonna set it up outside, but we've just set up inside the warehouse here, so I can show, show you what we've done. On a job like this, you have to figure out, you know, what the customer has on the van already. Um, does it need to be replaced? If so, what part of the, you know, the build that can we use again, like some of the water pipes and stuff or the water pump or anything like that? Then we have gotta figure out um, what's the best way to run it? Is it going to interfere with anything else in the in the same you know, you know with with the van as well? Like I'm not going to cross over a pipe or hit something else. So, you know, if we need to put another pump in, where does it go? Where's the best location where it's not going to stuff up something else? You know, are we going to get fuses? Is the switch in the right spot? So, all these different things that we got to try to figure out. Um, you know, where the bayonets are going. Um, make sure they're not going to get hit with mud or rocks or stuff like that. You know, where can the water that charges the new hot water system going to be? So all this kind of stuff, um, you gotta figure out, it's all going around your head. But you know, I'll show you, it's come, it's come up really good, so I'll show you how, how it all worked out. So again, um, the tap here, um, that's probably the only location. So when, when it's driving, it'll just store it like that, okay? When, when the tap, because the bed, this bed slides forward, okay? So that may, had to make sure that it just missed the bed um, so it can still be, still be used. So it's a you know, you know, standard uh, Aussie made mixer here so we use them in, in all, all the houses that we do so that's um not really good you can see inside the cupboard here we've got a new hot and cold water mains that come down this line here 
is a new um, suction line. Um, they used this other stuff before, I'll show you um, outside. I've got a piece of it. Uh, it was just collapsing on itself and that's why the, probably the pump wasn't um, sucking that well. Um, also we've got the lines going down through the floor. Um, we've installed the pump just under this cover. This is a screwed screwed lid on here. So um, yeah, it doesn't need access to it or whatever. So we've got the inline in bit. So this, this, this line comes in, goes through a filter that sucks it from the tank, of course. Does a shore throw pump. These are very quiet. I um, really like them. They're very strong pumps, and you know most of the JKs and everything have them. Um, very important that you have a check valve. So when you do connect it to the uh, existing, like if you had a caravan park at the mains or something, it needs to have a check valve so that pressure can't come back and interfere with this pump at all. And then that goes that goes round and then hooks onto the the water main here, and also goes out um, outside to the uh, hot water system. I'll show you that in a second. Here is the other side too. This is where it comes off the mains if you plug in on the caravan park. Okay, and it didn't have a pressure limiting valve because you could have really high pressure um, coming into your caravan, say 500 or 6, 7,000 kPa, and it could cause some, cause some damage. So that's why we put the pressure limiting valve in. We screwed that over to the side, and then we put the check valve in again so it can run on, you know, when it's on mains or off the pump and it won't interfere. So that's gone through the floor as well. Um, also, the switch for the pump um, was originally up here. Okay, now you can imagine when these when these campers are, um, you know, when you pull over on the side of the road, these these campers are, um, you, you can pop the lid slightly up and then you can open the door. Okay, so what I wanted is, I'll, I'll just show you. So if the lid's open and you just want to pop the door open a bit, you know, it's a little bit this high, I want to be able to turn the pump on without, now the, the pump would be on top of that up there. So it's just really, really hard to get to. So what I've done is I went down to Forest with all, all the electrics and he put this switch in here for me. So when it's, you know, it's, it's not it's not lit up when it's, you know, not working. So you can always see when it's on. So it's really easy just to reach in, turn turn the pump on and then you can use, you know, use the water if you need to or something that fires all up. So much better location. Uh, it's also, you know, visible, you can see it. And so things like if you want to wash your hands. So this is the, I'll show you the little pump up the front here. So this is the, the tap to, to wash your hands and stuff. So you can just um, turn on all that, wash your hands. Okay, and this is a quick release fitting. So you can just pop pop that tap off and it'll come out like that. All right, and so you can put it on the other one. But we did this so later on down the track, he can run a kitchen sink or something off it later on. So we'll just click that back in and that, that, that works. So all, all good. Um, gas bottles, they turned out really, really good. I'll show you that now. So it's got the little 4kg holder, you know, all works well. Um, new, new regulator and everything up there at the correct location. Test nipple is way easier to get to now. You can see that, okay. Um, when you open the, the locker up too, misses plenty of room. So yeah, he's gonna have no issues with that anymore. Um, oh, around the other front too, we, we put that, I forgot to show you that, the bayonet here. Got a bayonet down there, okay, with the thing for the you know barbecue in the future, and then I'll show you the hot water system over this side. So that's where we've just hung the hot water system, the kick ass, okay. And you can see that I've got the bayonet going there, going down with a 1.2 meter hose. It can be pretty short, and then that that just clips onto the gas. There's a quick release fitting for the gas, quick release for the water, okay. So. This is, your, this is your cold line, and that goes around to the quick release here. And then the hot main goes out of here and into the, into the, there, and that, that just goes directly to the kitchen sink. So now when they turn the hot water on in the kitchen sink, she'll all, she, she fires up, and um, so you'll have hot water at the kitchen sink. So all the, all the lines run, run in here. You know, you can see too, underneath, um, wherever there's gonna be some issues with um, chafing or everything, or you know, wear and tear, we, we sleeve it you know see all the gas pipes it's all been sleeved looks beautiful under there okay the original pump this was the original pump that they that they used and so you see why it's probably wasn't working that well and the hose too that they use they use just just use this um the normal clear stuff and you can see how even it's just see how flat it's gotten okay this is not this is not the best stuff um you should really have the reinforced suction hose so when it does start sucking, it doesn't collapse in on itself. Okay, so you can see how it would totally reduce the, the flow. So all that needs to be cut out and replaced. I'll show you at the back here, um, around underneath, you can see the, the hose. 
the stuff we've used. So this is the yeah, this is the um, reinforced stuff. You can see that's that's not gonna suck down at all. You know, nice nice new hose, and that'll and that'll work well for for years and years and years to come. I'll just show you how to hook up the hot water system to the actual kitchen sink and get the hot water running. And I'll try and do it with one hand, you know, because one hand's holding the camera. So see how we go. Here's a kick-ass unit here. Pick it up. Hang it on my purpose-made bracket. Grab the, uh, the gas hose, plug that in, hook it onto your gas underneath here. Okay, let's, let's connect it up. Under here is the cold. They hook, hook the cold on, clip that on. Hook the hot on over the other side, clip that on. You chuck the hot in first. So it's a matter of just taking off the plug. That goes in there, boom, she's connected. Okay, and also take that one off. Okay, the quick connect, and that's the cold, so plug that in. It's all hooked up to the camper, so we just gotta go inside and um, turn on the hot water tap. So flick it over, turn it on, and start lighting up. And she's adjusting, adjusting all, you see the hot water coming from the kitchen sink waste there, so she's flowing inside. So if you wanted to have a shower or anything like that later on down the track, um, you could, all, all you need to do is this, if you just unplug, unplug this, uh, the cold line, the water will stop, and then you just gotta unplug the hot, and then you could um, run the hot line here, you could take that off and then plug your shower straight onto this, and then you can plug it back into the camper to get it get it started. And then it will come out your shower, you know, so you can just shower off the hot water you see, you know, so pretty easy to do. As you can see, it's you know really easy to hook up. Like even your kids could do it for you. Um, you know, even with one hand, it's it's easy enough to hook on and and to take off. So if you want to just turn the turn the water off, these are really easy to disconnect. You just go click, and that. So she's off. Then you can put your put your caps on there, and she's all she's all ready to go. And you can just um, un under the gas here, under like that, so that they'll all come off. And then you can lift your hot water system off, it's got a nice bracket there so it just comes off and she's she's away. So anyway, good result. Alright so that's all sorted, it's a Dove Jayco with new gas bottle, holder, new regulator and a couple new bayonets and then there's the water side of thing with a new pump and anything. Now the water side of thing you can you can go nuts sorting that stuff yourself so it's, it's you know if you're handy enough you can try figure it out and, and do it that's that's fine but it is very time consuming. Um, the gas side of things, you know, you need a license. You need to be licensed to muck around with that, so you're covered by insurance. And that also means that the gas plumber takes a risk if anything goes wrong. It's on, you know, it's his, it's his issue. You know, if something is leaking or something like that. So um, make sure you get a gas plumber to do all that sort of stuff. So if you like what we've done, you know, taking the pain points out of um, camping and stuff, we've got a full page on uh, beautifulplumbing.com.au. We've got heaps of campers and little case studies that we've done. So check that out. And if you live in Perth over in WA, give us a call if you need a hand with anything, otherwise if you're on over in New South Wales and, and over the other eastern states, probably not much we can do, do for you at the moment anyway. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you later.